are about um, seeing and about vision um, because the, the Bible, it's incredible how many passages that, that it keeps recurring this uh, ability to see. Um, is this coming through okay? Okay. Oh, wait, I don't need to be this close to it. This ability to, to see, okay. And um, I, I've got three readings this morning, and they're, they're all about seeing. So I'm going to sing while, while we meditate about this, about seeing and how we see. And not only that, but what we are seeing uh, is, is pretty amazing. And I'm talking that we're going on like day 19, um, 19 days of, of these protests that are continuing around the world and they're, they're mostly peaceful and they are mostly to raise our seeing, our awareness. And I, and I think it's happening. So <laughs> I'm gonna sing be now my vision uh, before going into these readings. All right, so Joe, hope this hopefully we're trying to get our sound worked out here. Is this this is coming across pretty clear now? Okay. Uh, with the the guitar and the and the and the mic. Uh, um, that's coming across. Be now my vision, O God of my heart. <clears throat> Nothing surpasses the love you impart. You my best thought by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, your presence my light. Be now my wisdom, be my true word. Ever within me, my soul is assured. Mother and father, you are both to me. Now and forever, your child I will be. Riches I need not nor life's empty praise. You my inheritance now and always. You and you only are first in my heart. Great God, my treasure, may we never part. Sovereign of heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joys, O bright heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befalls, still be my vision, O ruler of all. Okay, so our um, readings then, as I said, our readings are about seeing and hearing and our awareness. This is from the daily reading that was yesterday um, about Moses. Then the Lord said to Moses, the cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, 
I have never been eloquent, but I am slow of speech. Then the Lord said to him, who gives speech to mortals? Who makes them mute or deaf or seeing or blind? Who does this? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, and I will be your mouth, and I will teach you what you are to speak. And the next reading, also from the Old Testament, is from the 42nd chapter of Job. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you, and I repent. And a third reading from the Old Testament, from the vision that the prophet Isaiah had from the sixth chapter. Then I heard a voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. And he said, go and say to this people, keep listening, but do not understand. Keep looking, but do not comprehend. Make the mind of this people dull and stop their ears and shut their eyes so that they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and comprehend with their minds and turn and be healed. And then finally, there is the reading from the Gospel of Mark. This is from the Gospel, from the 10th chapter. They came to Jericho as he and his disciples, um, could you bring it in? Yeah, okay. I want you to be able to see my eyes and my face because I, I think I talk more through my eyes than anything. <laughs> Okay, I'll try to get my hands in there. So they came to Jericho, and as Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving, Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many people ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and said, Call him over here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up. He is calling you. Throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed Jesus on the way. There's a lot of historical details in my sermon this morning. So, so I'm, I'm going to uh, kind of keep to my text here because, because I don't want to miss, miss these. I think, think they're important. In Richmond, Virginia, in Richmond, Virginia, the, the capital of Virginia, 
on June 11th, that was just a few days ago, protesters pulled down a statue that had been there for a hundred years. And they pulled down the statue of the president of the Confederacy, Jefferson Davis. That Richmond was also the capital of the Confederacy. It, it was like the Washington DC of the Confederacy. So protesters pulled down this statue of Jefferson Davis and it was added to a growing list of these monuments and statues that have been torn down in some of these protests in the wake of George Floyd's death. This was an eight foot, an eight foot bronze figure on Richmond's Grand Monument Avenue. There's, there's a whole big uh, avenue with the beautiful trees in, in, in Richmond. And there's a lot of these Confederate monuments and statues. That statue of Jefferson Davis was marked by the government the, the, of Richmond to be removed in the next few months anyway. They were gonna take it down anyway. <laughs> but the protesters did not wanna wait for a few months and they tied ropes to the legs of the statue and just pulled it down and it, and, it, and it crashed down onto the road and a tow truck came and hauled it off, this statue of Jefferson Davis. That statue was put there in 1907. 1907, a statue of the president of the Confederacy. 42 years after the Civil War. Why was that statue put up 42 years after the war was over? It was, it was over. I thought, I thought Jefferson Davis was on the side, the secessionists who lost. I thought the union had come together again. So why are we celebrating 42 years later, a man who wanted to dismantle the union? Think about this. Why are we putting these monuments up to these people that wanted to take our nation apart? So, listen to what Jefferson Davis, the president of the Confederacy, believed. He believed that black people, African Americans, do not have a soul. They don't have a soul. So he said, you can't allow this property, that's what they were called, property, you can't allow this property to become an American citizen, they don't have a soul. When the war ended, Lee surrendered to Grant at Appomattox 
Jefferson still believed that he could hold together the Confederacy. And he left Richmond because the, the Union had, had taken it. And he was trying to get to Texas. And he even had plans to go to Mexico. But he still believed that there could be this Confederacy of white people in control. That's what he wanted. It's, it's in the history books. And they caught him. They caught him, him in Irwinville, Georgia, as he was trying to escape. And then they took him to Virginia, where, where he was once the, the president. And they put him in chains. Here he was. And you know what he said when they took the chains out and started to put those on him? He said, that's what you do to slaves. No man with a soul would obey any order to put a white person in chains. There are about 700 Confederate monuments in the United States. And maybe, maybe that's, that number is a little lower now since these protests, because a number of them have been taken down. Most of these monuments were put up between 1890 and the 1950s. Do you know what was happening in America in that period of time? The Jim Crow segregation laws and the civil rights movement. And it was like these reactive states in the South were saying, no way, no, no way. Um, you may think we lost that war, but we will still be a segregated nation, at least in our states. And that's when all of these monuments started going up. Many, many of which are, are still there. So, These monuments glorified the cause of the Civil War, a war that secessionists fought to guarantee the rights of some human beings to own others. This is what the war was fought about. There were groups of people who raised money to put these monuments up. And one of the largest and most powerful of the groups was a group of women called the Daughters of, of the, the United Daughters of the Confederacy. It was founded in the 1890s. They are a large part of why that giant carving was made, that giant carving on Stone Mountain, Georgia. And it's like the Confederacy's image of Mount Rushmore. <laughs> Mount Rushmore, where you've got Jefferson Davis, Robert E. Lee, and Stonewall Jackson carved into a mountain. That was begun in 1910, and it wasn't completed until the 1960s. But this is a monument, mo a monument right here in the United States, and it's gigantic. <laughs> You can see it for miles and miles. 
And it's a monument to white supremacy. And here it is in our country. How are you going to take that down? <laughs> so so um, when the civil rights movement began as an act of defiance, in 1956, Georgia redesigned its state flag and they put the Confederate flag on it. And in 1962, South Carolina put the Confederate flag on top of its Capitol building. In a 2016 report, the Southern Poverty Law Center said that the country's more than 700 monuments were part of roughly 1,500 symbols of the Confederacy in public spaces. To make matters worse, the Jim Crow laws of segregation, those were the laws that said that, that you've got white bathrooms and you've got black bathrooms. You, you've got the water fountains that the white people use and you, you've got the black water fountains. You've got places in a restaurant that, that black people had to sit or they weren't even allowed in it at all. The, those were all those laws, the Jim Crow laws. When Martin Luther King Jr. was arrested by police at the counter there of, of the restaurant, what was it, a Woolworths? <laughs> it was the, the Jim Crow laws were still in effect in the 1950s and 1960s. During this time, do you know who one of the, the largest perpetrators of segregation in the United States was? It was the, the United States military, our armed forces. Our armed forces practiced these Jim Crow laws. Black servicemen were confined to substandard housing segregated transportation systems, and even colored only seating in movie houses. And they're, they're like fighting for our freedom and liberty. These people who are fighting, do you realize that like 40, over 40% 40 of the United States military are African Americans and people of color? And as recently as World War II, they were still segregated against and, and had to go to their own places. A big issue has come up now about should we rename those 10 military installations in southern states that were named after Confederate officers. Should we rename them? One of those installations is in, in Georgia, Fort Benning, named after the Confederate general, Henry Lewis Benning, who said black people were not really human and could not be trusted with citizenship. In a famous speech he made, this is the general that our large military installation right now in Georgia is named after. In a famous speech in 1861, he said, that the state of Georgia left the Union for one reason, 
to prevent the abolition of slavery. Benning warned that the ambition of slavery would, no, excuse me, not the, the abolition of slavery would lead to the horror of black governors, black legislatures, black juries, quote, black everything. Benning said, if blacks are allowed citizenship, white people will be completely exterminated. Every one of those 10 army installations in the South, named after Confederate officers, Every one of these officers held these white supremacist views. But recently, this, what was this, last week? The president, the president of the United States of America said that these 10 army forts, military, installations were magnificent and fabled military installations and that they have become part of a great American heritage, a history of winning and victory and freedom. That is not what the history books say, Mr. President. That is, that is not what those men who those forts are named after believe. They, they, believe, they believed that the African-American, they didn't call them Americans. They, they didn't want them to be citizens. They said they didn't have a soul. Could you imagine being a soldier? An African-American soldier, a soldier, a person of color, and having to train at one of those forts that is named after a white supremacist? What, what is that going to do to your morale or belief in the Declaration of Independence that says we're all created equal? All of our readings in the Bible this morning, the Old Testament, and then Jesus healing the blind man, Bartimaeus. All of our readings are about seeing and hearing and how it is in God's power to give us these gifts. I believe that all of these protest marches that we've been watching for 19 days and counting, and it keeps going on and on, all of these protests are by thousands and thousands of people whose eyes God has opened. Because one of the most amazing things in the protests is that they're so diverse. They're, they're not just African-Americans. They're not just black people. They're, they're not just Hispanic people. They're everyone, everyone. Every people in our church have been in them. God is opening our eyes. God is opening our eyes. God is saying, how can you have 10 military installations named after white supremacists in a country that is supposed to be the land of the free where all are created equal. God is opening our eyes. The Apostle Paul said that when we see with God's eyes, we don't segregate anymore. We don't segregate. We don't discriminate. 
We let go of our theories that one race is better than another race. When our eyes are opened, we look at each other and realize we're in the same family. We're all together. We are one. We are one family. When God heals our blindness, we realize that we are one human family serving one God in love. And Jesus healed Bartimaeus, and he can heal us. That is what our reading says today. He can open our eyes. We can see that we are all in one family created by one God who calls us all together, embraces us to love one another. Let us pray. Dear God, we, we are going through another great awakening. It is a great awakening. You are, you are opening more and more eyes. You are, you are letting us see with your eyes. Help us, fill, fill us with, with your love now and, and, and bring in more light into our souls and our minds so that we can share your love uh, and, and compassion with everyone, all people, because we're all in the same family. We offer our prayers in your name, Jesus, for you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you all for, for continuing to send in your pledges. Let us make our offertory prayer now. O oh Lord, let your work continue to work through these gifts and through our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And for, for our closing hymn, and, and um, please, when I'm, when I'm singing these, uh, I hope uh, that you're singing with me. <laughs> I hope you're singing with me at home. Uh, that would make me feel better. So we're going to sing. Uh, as if, as if we were all marching together there and we're all holding hands and we're going to sing this uh, beautiful hymn, We Shall Overcome. We shall overcome, we shall overcome, we shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome someday. We'll go hand in hand. We'll go hand in hand, we'll go hand in hand, we'll go hand in hand someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we go 
We are not afraid. We are not afraid. We are not afraid. We are not afraid today. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we are not afraid today. Our God will see us through. Our God will see us through. Our God will see us through. Our God will see us through someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe our God will see us through someday. The truth shall make us free. The truth shall make us free. The truth shall make us free. The truth shall make us free someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe the truth shall make us free someday. We shall live in peace. We shall live in peace. We shall live in peace. We shall live in peace, live in peace someday. shall live in peace someday. Let us go forth now into this beautiful day filled with the love and the joy the compassion of Jesus Christ so that we may share his spiritual gifts, his spiritual gifts, which will bring us all together. Let us share these with everyone to whom God sends us. In Jesus' name, amen. Have an incredible day today. Um, I keep you in my hearts all the time. I love you. Can't wait to see you again. Um, and uh, in the meantime, we'll be discussing a time when we can um, have some services together outside. God bless you. <laughs>